morning. Welcome to transition time class number four. So this in this class, it's, it's an interesting one. I always tell people there's a particular process that you go through when you're trying to really become uh, happiest and healthiest person you can be. The first three classes, actually four classes, because part three or th uh, class three had two parts, they're huge. You really can't get to today until you've done some of the preliminary work in the first three classes. And we're going to go through what those are. But today, huge. If you want to have one single thing that you do that is going to make such a difference in your life, do what we're talking about today. If I were ever to give a TED talk, I would talk about the most incredibly simple thing you can do to change your life. And that is what we're going to talk about today, stopping the mind chatter. It may seem like it's impossible, but it is not. And I want to tell you before I even begin, I was probably one of the biggest chatterers you will ever find. Biggest chatterers. I was one of those people who was blah, 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 taking things personal, becoming a victim, rolling around in my head. Well, if they cared about me, they wouldn't have done this. Okay, lots going on up there. And when I first started meditating, it was like I had to work so hard to let go of control because thought, whether we believe it or not, is control. Ooh, that's tough. So I'm going to get us into the PowerPoint. So let me share my screen. And let's head right into it. So today's class, getting out of mind chatter. <laughs> so we know that the other three classes were really about us. They were about looking inside. They were about saying, okay, you know what? I've got some needs. I've got some behaviors. I've got some reactions. I've got some hard emotions. I've got bad memories. I've got things that are holding me back. And so what we've been doing is learning how to look at those, how to surface those so that we can take the time to say, you know what, I need to heal from these. So we talked about our human conditioning, why that came there. We talked about the process of learning to let go of all this hard emotion. We talked about forgiveness, victimization, projection, throwing those angry hate bombs, all right? All of those things were big. We're going to revisit those in class five, but there's so much about getting out of your head that I'm going to try to use all of our time today to just talk about this. So we're going to talk about why are we so in our heads? Why do we even want to get out? Why would we try to get out of our heads? And what is, this, what is true brain balance? What does that even look like? All right, we're going to talk about something that I call the clicks of the pineal. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to talk about how do you get out? So, you have learned in the past to be the super ultimate observer, okay? At first, you just learned to be a, the observer, then you became the ultimate observer, and then you became the super ultimate observer when you learn to understand what's really driving you in the background, what your reactions and triggers are, what your personal needs are, when you're being a victim, and when you're projecting, okay? You're going to now become the super duper ultimate observer, <laughs> Because you're going to have to now observe your mind. We talked about those keys of letting go, okay? And one of the things that we, the last classes that we worked on, we worked on forgiving yourself, healing your younger use, releasing the emot emotional charges around experiences. And now it's time to really learn to tame the ego. That you cannot tame the ego if you allow the ego's Number one tool to be present, da, 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 da. that would be the mind. If your mind is engaged, 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 that is the ego's tool, okay? So we're going to talk about that and about how to let that go. We also knew we had to get in and understand why. Why do you cope the way you do? Well, I want you to apply these, the understanding of why to why do I chatter so much? And what is the nature of my chatter? 
what is going on in all my chatter? How much do I chatter? And what is the nature of it? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it judgmental? Is it personally demeaning and critical? Is it critical of others? Okay. A lot of people say to me, yeah, but you know what? I, <laughs> I might chatter, but I'm chattering about positive stuff. Well, honey, you're still chattering. Okay. So even if you have gotten to the point where you're like, I, I really try to stay really positive. Okay. Now you're really close then to letting go of the ego's tool, which is chatter, chatter. Right. We talked, as I said, we talked about who you need to forgive. Your chatter is going to be a big indicator of who you need to forgive. Okay, because if you take the chatter and you look at what you're chattering about, whether you're a victim or upset or you're disempowered or you're not good enough or your body image is awful, if you look at that and then do the wonders of why, 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 and you go back, you're going to find out who you need to forgive. And remember, as you are going through, we're going to employ the treasures of wisdom. It is to have humility. It means you're willing to really look at your hard stuff. It is having compassion. You're going to be compassionate for the mind chatter that you have. You're not going to judge the mind. You're going to say, okay, you kept me in fear. You did your job to bring my human conditioning to the forefront, but now it's time to stop. And if you do get into chatter, remember that life is about moderation. It is not about extremes of anything, okay? Even good things you can overdo. So this is about moderation and saying, if I chatter, sometimes okay, but I'm going to try to do most of my time without it. We talked about releasing charges around harsh moment, um, emotions. Yeah, we, that is still critical. And again, if you look at the mind chatter, which we're going to get into in just a moment here, if you look at the mind chatter, the mind chatter is going to indicate to you where you're holding hard emotions. And again, remember, in all of this experience, have patience with yourself, have compassion, forgive yourself for whatever it is you chatter about, even if it's not so nice. Okay. So I want to remind you about something. A lot of people who have been doing the Healing Your Younger Use video based on the last two classes, um, they said, oh my God, I, do, I feel like I have so much work to do. I have to visit like every age of me because my entire life has sucked. And I'm like, okay, no, no, no. You know what? I want to say this. You don't have to hit every age. Okay. Hit the earliest age that you can. That's really going to help. And otherwise, even if you're not hitting just the earliest age, so let's say you're trying to let go of something like uh, resentment. All right. And you go and you go to resentment. Well, you can find tons of resentment. But if you go to the first time you felt resentment, you're going to hit a lot because that early you triggered all the other yous. So the earlier ones you can hit, the better. But then you need to hit the key experiences that are painful. So get the biggies, the ones that are still so painful and hurt you so much. Okay. And then just take your time with the rest of them. All of the things that you need to heal will surface eventually. Right. And the more you do this, even like even today, after God, how many years of doing this, um, 12 years of doing this, I still have things that pop up, but it's kind of like, oh, oh, well, okay. Yeah. I can, all right. We'll go in and heal that. You know, you just had that reaction. Oh, you need to heal that. Okay. In the future, I want to put a plug in for this. We're going to learn about something called the seven Essene mirrors. The seven Essene mirrors are the seven different ways in which life, people, and circumstances show up to reflect to you what it is that is still broken within. Okay, it's huge. 
If you're anxious about wanting to see that, Greg Braden did, um, Braden, B-R-A-D-E-N, did a YouTube series on the seven UC mirrors. He does a great job. Um, on my website, kellyschweigel.com, I also did a class, as I think I did a two-part class on it. You know, so check it out if you want. Now, here's our girl. She's saying, now what? Okay, I'm doing my inner work. You told me that. I'm healing my younger me's. How am I supposed to keep going? Ah, thank you, my dear. We need to name her. Somebody come up with a great name for her. Um, but it's so exactly what this class is about. This is now the phase when you get through really starting to look at your younger selves. Now's the phase where you get to start to balance yourself. There are particular things that need balancing within. And what we're going to be talking about today is something called pituitary versus pineal balancing, okay? And it's balancing where you're thinking from. It's going to stop the mind chatter. Then you're going to eventually, and these are future classes, you're going to balance masculine versus feminine energies or approaches to life. And you're going to balance whether you're a giver or a receiver. Those are huge things to balance. Okay, I've got a message, which means I need to have glasses on. Okay. Oh, okay, so let's see. Uh, da, da. Oh, I love these names. Okay, they're giving her names. Maya, Anastasia, Stella. Ooh, what do you think? Ooh, Maya's good. Maya's awesome. All right, let me know your thoughts, guys. That girl needs a name. <laughs> okay. So let's get into this. We're going to talk about the pituitary versus pineal gland thinking. Cindy likes Maya. All right. So I'm going to close the chat for a minute. So when it comes to pituitary versus pineal thinking, pituitary thinking is this. Okay. Well, in this, this image that I have of this brain here, this right here is where your eye would be, what you're seeing on the, on the screen. That's where your eye would be in this, this section of the brain. It's like a cross section of the middle of your brain. Your nose would be about there, okay? So it's, it's a rough estimate of where that is. Pituitary thinking is in the front of your forehead, all right? The pituitary gland is right at the base of the frontal lobe, about a, an, an inch behind the bridge of the nose. Okay, it is when you are focused externally in life, you're going to be thinking through the front of the head. You're going to think about what you should do, how you should behave, what you're supposed to be doing, what other people think of you. Oh, you know, you're going to see yourself through their eyes. You're going to get into comparison. Okay, it's also some good things, and we're going to talk about those in a moment. Pineal thinking. There is a gland in the center of your head and it's called your pineal gland, all right? And we're gonna talk about these. This is center of the head thinking, okay? And this means you are focused internally. You're focused on your higher self. You're focused on your wisdom. You're focused on how you feel about yourself. You've got, got wisdom, right? And compassion for yourself. And trust me, you will have wisdom and compassion. You don't judge yourself when you're thinking from the inside. You judge yourself when you're thinking from the forehead. So this will all get deeper and deeper and deeper, so hold tight. So when it comes to the pituitary gland, which is right here, that base of the, of the frontal lobe right here, so the eyes here, nose is here, about an inch behind the bridge of the nose, you're gonna find that pituitary gland. Now, this gland has some great hormones. It's part of the endocrine system, and so is the pineal. The pituitary gland releases growth hormone when you're young. So when you're 12, you're like, you know, hey, it helps you grow tall or, you know, breasts or whatever you need to grow, all right? It is also going to stimulate your thyroid. Wonderful. It's going to help you when you're in labor, um, go through contractions. It's going to help you produce milk when you are, are breastfeeding. But guys, if you're not 12 or pregnant, which I'm guessing none of you are, okay, here's what happens. Oh, unless, of course, Leah is on. Um, oh, and it's also a, a, it also helps you to... Um, it's an antidiuretic, helps you not get puffy, okay? So, um, so here's what happens. It also releases adrenaline, the fear hormone, and cortisol, the stress hormone, okay? So there's some good things in that 
gland, but some not so good. So if you're stuck in your head, rolling around in the front of your head, you're releasing stress and fear, stress and fear, stress and fear, stress and fear. Okay, ego's tool. Now the pineal on the other hand, which is right in the here in the limbic system, okay? So this is the back of the head, that's the cerebellum, okay? It releases melatonin so you can sleep well. Metatonin, which is a chemical that helps you get all zen-like, helps you get all peaceful. It releases serotonin, the good mood elevator, okay? So you're nice and happy. All those anti-depression drugs, they are giving you synthetic serotonin. You wanna get happy? Get the F out of your head, okay? And it releases something called dimethyltryptamine. We're gonna talk about that. That's gonna come up big time in this class, okay? So here we go. You got these two centers of thinking. When you're thinking from the front of the head, here's what happens. You think, what do others think of me? Do they like me? Do they love me? Do they accept me? Am I even valued? Do I even have any worth? Oh my God, what if I'm not good enough in their eyes? <gasps> you're gonna try to get other people to make you happy. You, you're not making me happy. And then you become a victim to others. You become a victim to the world, to, to uh, you know, can't even say I'm a victim to the universe because it doesn't give me what I want, okay? Um, you can, it'll keep you looking for love outside of yourself. It's gonna keep you living your life from the outside in. The outside is constantly impacting you, okay? When you live in the center of your head by the pineal in what's called the limbic system, you're gonna start to love, value, respect, and honor yourself. You're gonna really realize that what others think of you doesn't really matter. It can't impact your love. When you're in the center of your head, trust me, you're gonna like who you are. It's only when you get in the front of your head you don't. It's gonna help you to become responsible for your own happiness, not others. You're gonna look for all that joy within, okay? You're gonna realize you can't be a victim to anything. You create all of your reality and you're gonna realize you are love. This is looking at the world now from the inside out. I create my happiness, you don't affect it, okay? You don't have the power to affect it. So here are some of the consequences of living. If you live in the front of the head, you're gonna end up in impatience, waiting for life to show up better for you. Okay, you're gonna end up in disappointment. You create all these expectations of the world. You know, if they were like this, they should have been like this, and I expected you to be different. That's all the front of the head. Okay, projection, you know, lobbing those angry hate bombs we learned about. All right, it's their fault. They did this. They hurt me. They blah, 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 blah. Okay, you're going to feel feelings of rejection and insecurity. That comes from being in the ego's tool. Okay, it's going to create anxiety and fear. Okay, you're going to worry about what's going to happen to you in life. You're going to overthink situations. You're going to worry about your future. And you're not going to have enough. You're not going to be enough. And it's also going to keep you from being grounded. Okay? You're going to start to float above your body because everything is upsetting and ah, not good and fear. And it scatters you and you become frustrated and easily irritable. Okay? You're going to feel like being in your body is unsafe and you're going to end up with very heavy, hard emotions. So, I want you guys to do this. I want you to think of a time this last week when you lived from the outside in. You were in chatter. You were in chatter. Think about that. When were you in chatter? Did you get any of these feelings on the screen? And for those on the phone, I'll read it. Did you get into anxiety, fear? Did you end up not getting grounded? Impatience, disappointed? creating stories about something or someone, becoming overly emotional or just really emotional, project your feelings onto someone, feel rejected, feel insecure. Did you take things personal? Did you indulge reactions and needs and triggers? Feel into that. How did it make you feel? All right, feel into that. It doesn't feel good. And you're releasing the stress hormone, cortisol. 
and the fear hormone, adrenaline. So now your body feels icky. Here's the thing. We need to look at our brain like this. The frontal lobe has some really good things in it. Okay, here's what it has. It, it, you wanna consider it like a toolbox. It has logic. You can do math when you get into the front. You can reason well, you can problem solve, you can get organized, you can compartmentalize things, you can be rational and responsible. Okay, you need those tools. If you don't have those tools, you're gonna to be a flighty wreck. But I want you to imagine the front of the head like this. Imagine it like a toolbox, all right? If you're gonna go in there and access a tool like logic or reason, use it. Oh, I should probably pay my taxes or I'll get in trouble. Good reasoning. And then put the tool back and get out. Because if you stay there, I want you to imagine this, a toolbox is cold, it's dark, and there are sharp objects in there and you're eventually going to get hurt. Having an analysis is great, but overanalyzing because you stayed in the toolbox, analyzing some more, overanalyzing some more, getting paranoid, getting upset. Now you're going down the rabbit hole of thought and you might as well go play with the Cheshire cat, okay? Because you stayed in the toolbox. It's a toolbox. Don't live there. Now, center of your head in the limbic system we're going to learn about and how to get there and what it's like all right this you want to you want to imagine that this is where you can activate depth of senses we're going to talk about this this is amazing okay you're going to activate your intuition this is where you have creativity ingenuity this is where you have wisdom you can actually get in here and pray because you can actually communicate with god from this this the front of the head, you're not communicating. You can talk to your guides. You can communicate with source. You can meditate, okay? You can actually get into sending and receiving messages, okay? And I, wanna, I will talk about that. There's science behind this. So you wanna live in here where you can send and receive in your, in your center of your head, where you can send and receive messages, and then you open your heart, let those messages move to your heart, and you're gonna live with a head-heart connection that is beautiful. You're gonna live from a compassionate space, right? That's not gonna happen when you're in chatter. Now, when you live in the pineal, in the center of your head, that place, okay? It is going to allow you to be calm, happy, and centered because you're releasing instantaneously the right chemicals to get you into a calm, happy place. It is gonna keep you from all that bad ego chatter, da, 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 da. okay? So when you need to be ra rational or logical or problem solve or you know compartmentalize something, go to the front of the head, use the tool, then get out, open up the head and listen with the heart. We're gonna talk about how. Now, there is something even more important that happens in the center of the head. So this little guy on the screen is saying, wait, you mean I'm psychic? Yeah, y'all are psychic, okay? Y'all are psychic. The pineal gland is so much more than you can imagine. This, what I have on the screen here, is called the Eye of Horus, okay? This is a symbol that came out of ancient Egypt. It is a symbol for health and rejuvenation, but also is said to have protective powers, and it possesses healing properties. Okay, it's not mystical. I'm going to talk to you about what this actually is, all right? I want to show you a really amazing thing. First of all, the Eye of Horus, even if you look in like, Wikipedia, or if you look in anything about what the Eye of Horus actually means, it represents the six senses, okay? And yes, I said six. 
this is divided into um, into these six different parts. Okay, so if you look at the right side of the eye, you know the part that's labeled one half. That's about your sense of smell. If you look at the the pupil, that is the sense of sight. If you look at the eyebrow on this, guys, that is thought, but not thought from the pineal. I'm sorry, from the pituitary, from the front of the head. It's perception from the center of the head. I'll explain this in a minute. The left side of this eye is your hearing. The curved tail is the taste. The teardrop is your touch. Okay, now I wanna show you something very amazing. So this is just the eye of Horus um, that came from ancient Egypt. They said it was the gateway to your soul. Hmm, let's take a look at how the pineal is the gateway to your soul. The gateway is in the limbic system. The limbic system is the eye of Horus. Okay, look at the pictures. All right, there's the corpus callosum, there's the thalamus gland, there's the hypothalamus, there's the cerebellum. Okay, it's right in there, all right? And right in here, there's your pineal. Now, the pineal is small. What? Okay, the whole limbic system works together, but why is the pineal so important? Well, there's some really cool stuff in here, guys. Before I explain fully, I want to help you understand this. The pineal, okay, it actually gives other dimension to your five senses, and then it adds things to it. Did you know that there are seven different ways that you can be clairvoyant? You can have clair, um, clair uh, this is called clairvoyance, Clairvoyance, okay, just regular clairvoyance, is your, your sense of psychic vision or seeing, okay? Clairaudience, right, is your sense of hearing. But then you're getting it psychically or you're seeing psychic visions. Your clairtangency is how you touch, right? But this, you can now have psychometry. When you touch something, you're getting a different dimension to touching. You're getting a psychic impression from what you touch. Claire Gustin's is tasting or psychic tasting. The other day I was working with a client and I said, oh, oh, you, okay, you're on medication. She's like, oh, oh yeah, I am. I'm like, what are those medications? This is for depression. And she's like, yeah, how did you know that? I'm like, I can taste it. Okay. Somebody was, was uh, drinking, you know, somebody had me check in on their brother and, and I said, oh, he's, he's been drinking. I can taste it. <laughs> it's so weird, but it's the psychic taste. It brings another level, okay? Claire sale or Claire aliens is Claire smelling, okay? So when there is, um, let's see, when, when do I see this? Oh, there have been times that I've, I've smelled like disembodied smells like, oh, actually COVID has one. COVID, you can actually smell smoke when you have it. And I thought that that was just me. And then I, I read other people who had COVID who are having the same thing. It's like this disembodied smell of smoke. Okay, so I've got a message. Let's see what this says. So what about clairsentient? Not sure if I spelled that correctly, but feeling others' emotions. Kim, that is a beautiful, or Andrew, that is a beautiful transition into my next one. Now, there's claircognizance, and we're coming to yours, okay? Clairsentience is next. So claircognizance will happen only when you're in the pineal. So you're gonna always, you know, not always, but most of the time you're gonna see, hear, touch, taste, and smell, right? Being in the pineal gives them dimension, but there are two types of clairvoyance that you will only have if you are in, your, uh, in the pineal. Claircognizance is one, and that is your gut knowing, okay? It's a gut or psychic knowing. The other one is this. <coughs> clairsentience, okay? Clairsentience, which Kim or Andrew brought up, is having that clear um, ability to sense other people's emotions. Okay, so now you're empathic. The more you can have a sense of knowing or having a sense of empathy, but it'll be really all over the place. It's not balanced, you know, it, it, but it comes in to balance when you're in your 
Okay, let me just get, I just want to get in and, and mute everyone. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so the question now, okay, this is kind of cool. So I'm going to open up my, clair, my clairvoyance or my psychicness. Everyone can be psychic because everyone biologically has a pineal. So how do you activate these senses? Well, let me open up this chat here. Somebody else has a message. Uh, there we go. Uh, Marissa says, what is the difference between being empathic and Claire empathy? Nothing. They're the, they're the same. Exactly the same. Being empathic and is, a, is the, what you're doing is the action. Claire empathy is the type of clairvoyance you have. So it's the same thing. Okay, good question. Thank you. So how do you activate these senses then? Okay, and how do I, what do I do? Okay, well, we have to know about DMT then, dimethyl tryptamine, okay? So the structure of DMT, okay, is actually released through the pineal. Well, it's released in the gut, but it's released throughout the endocrine system, okay? The endocrine system is all connected, all right? So it actually occurs within some of the biomolecules like the chemical serotonin or melatonin. Right? You don't need to know this, but it's kind of like knowing that, that you know, these are all kind of connected in your, in your, in your pineal, right? <laughs> Medical News Today said that DMT, though, is a hallucinogenic tryptamine drug that occurs naturally in many plants and animals, but it can, it can induce psychedelic experiences. <sighs> okay, here's what my guide said. They made me giggle. They're like, it's not hallucinogenic. What happens is that when you open up the pineal by using a drug, you're overdosing on something. Remember, everything is moderation. You're overdosing on something and you're getting too much of um, clairvoyance about your surroundings, okay? About the universe, how it works, about what's going on. So when you start to see things, welcome to my regular world, okay? I see things all the time and I'm not on DMT, right? But I am in my pineal all the time. So how do you activate these senses? And am I going to have a psychedelic experience? No, you're not, <laughs> okay? Unless you take a bunch of drugs, well, then you're probably going to overdose. And, and when I say overdose, I don't mean like die overdose. What I mean is that... Um, it is about getting in, if you have a, a psychic experience, you're going to get a big psychic experience. We should probably take it slow. Okay, so um, comments here. Uh, what if you haven't used your pineal? Can it become crystallized? And if so, what can one do to uncrystallize it so it can be used? It is like a muscle, okay? It is, it is a gland, okay? And it can become, they call it actually calcified. So it becomes calcified, All right? So there are certain things we want to do. Like I will not use um, fluoride. I don't normally in the United States, I don't drink tap water. Here it's beautiful. It just comes from the mountains. And, um, but you know, there are certain things that I don't like to do, like using a lot of white sugars, you know, or things like that. I just try to stay away from those. And the way to cleanse it best is to use it. I'm working with someone right now and I've been working with him to open his, you know, blockages in his pineal, get out of his head, stop all the chatter. And he has had headaches this last week, like you would not believe because he never uses that area of his brain. He was always in chatter. So when you first learn to get out, you might get a headache because you're using something you haven't used and it has to get used to higher frequencies. We'll talk about that in a minute. Good question. Thank you, Marcia. So here's the thing. How do you activate this? Well, you got to get out of your chatter enough to release enough DMT in order to do something important. You're going to activate the cerebellum. So what's the cerebellum, you ask or didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The cerebellum. All right, again, here's where the eyes and nose are. Okay, we just kind of flip the brain this time. This is your cerebellum. It's at the brain stem, okay, at the base of the skull in the back, all right? This cerebellum is what receives information from the sensory systems, okay? And what's going to happen is it will coordinate 
um, motor functioning in the body. So it's going to help you balance and have good posture and be coordinated and have speech and have smooth and balanced muscle activity, okay? Because your, you know, your, your, your um, cerebellum is helping you do that. Now, when you activate into the, the um, DMT it, by being in the center of the head and out of chatter, you're just quiet, you're gonna release enough DMT that is going to activate portions of the cerebellum that are going to tell you how to use your senses and, and uh, in a, in a multi-dimensional way and help you to understand how to use that clairvoyance, one of your clairs or all of your clairs or clairvoyances to function better in the world. Okay. You're going to be able to use this biologically given tool to operate better. What you say? What are you talking about? Let me summarize. The pineal gland or that limbic system allows you to have communication inside of you. It allows, uh, it allows communication to come in. Okay, so it allows higher energies to be coming in. It allows you to activate your intuition. It allows you to tap into universal knowledge. And then what you say, and I say this. I'm going to hold on for that a second. Your pineal is a physical third eye. This is just biology. Many of you may not know this about me, but I was pre-med at one time and I dissected everything. I even had a human head placed in front of me where I had to go into it, all right? When we dissected inside the body and we looked at the pineal gland, okay, it's hard to see, but they have what are called photoreceptors in the pineal. Photoreceptors are called, nicknamed cones and rods. They are in your eyeball. Okay, there are all these little filaments, okay, that, that have these, that are receptors for energy. So what happens is little points of light called photons we learned about in class one are all entering in and the photoreceptors are picking up the different vibrations. Oh, so um, violet is vibrating like this and red is vibrating like this. And the photoreceptors will pick up the information and give you a sight language. The ear is very similar. It picks up different vibrations of sound waves, okay? And, and it will give you different, like red is the key of G, okay? So it will give you these different sounds. So you get a sound language or a sight language, all right? Your third eye in the center of your head is an eye. It has those too. Okay, and what happens is that physicists explain that those little points of light that are somehow reaching, which we're going to talk about in a second, that are reaching the pineal gland are information carriers. Do you remember the first class where we talked about the sacred geometry of the photons and biophotons that are in your body and in the world? They break down into a little um, thing called a dodecahedron, which is a crystalline shape. Crystals are microchips. Microchips hold information. Physicists explain little points of light that you're getting into your eyes and getting into your ears and also getting into your pineal carry information. They carry information about each other. They carry information about collective humanity. They carry knowledge of the universe. This is how animals communicate, okay? This is how all of your clairvoyance operates because you're getting information from all the little points of light that make up everything. Even if I hold this little ball right here, and let's just say it was something really ancient, this is, and it's from Ikea. But if I'm holding this and I, and, and I am uh, somebody who has clairvoyance of, of psychic touch, I can read, oh, who held this last? Wow, because it's actually made of little points of light. So you can pick up the information. And when you pick up the information, 
you're, you're actually sensing it in your third eye. Let me explain how. So you have five openings into your brain, five. Two are your temples. Those are openings into the brain, okay? Right in the front here where people put like the, um, East India put the um, bindi dot, okay? Or a Catholic Sioux Ash Wednesday right here. This is called the glabella fissure. The glabella fissure is an opening. There's a little jagged cross that goes right over the bridge of your, or over the top of the bridge of your nose. And that's where that is, okay? It's an opening right into the pineal. Okay, so photons of light can come right through that little opening. You have a spot on the top of your head where you had the soft spot as a baby. That's called an anterior fontanelle. And you have a spot right in the back of your head that's called your posterior fontanelle. So these five places here, front and back, sides, top, okay, they're all openings that allow information carriers to go into that third eye and the photoreceptors in that third eye will start to receive them. But you have to activate enough of the cerebellum to have your clairvoyance open. So how do you release enough to dimethyltryptamine? You get it out of your head. You got to be in no thought. Okay, we're going to talk about this some more. Fascinating, isn't it? So you've got a physical third eye. Now, Here's what happens. Many, many years ago, this is before I wrote the books, I was in the pineal and I realized that I was able to, once I'm in the pineal and I learned how to be there, I realized that you can click around and I can have different modes of clicking in my brain and they all meant something different. So when you get into, and we're going to do this in a moment, when you get into your pineal, actually we won't, we have 15 minutes, but when you get into your pineal, okay, and you imagine like a ray going straight up, what's going to happen is that straight up feeling is actually hearing your higher self or your guides. And if you're in that place and you click just in front of it, this is where you have telepathy or you have animal communication because it's the same thing as telepathy, okay? So you can hear animals. When you go into just in front by the hairline, that is your emotional body. When you click and you're in the frontal lobe, now you're in the ego tool, you're in the external world or logic, okay? So you, it's, some of it's good. If you click back into the center, and now you adjust your ray just behind, you can get into something called universal knowledge and wisdom. I personally, when I, when I intuit, keep the top three open, okay? Universal knowledge, hearing your higher self and guides, or God, you can call it, okay? In the front, you know, just in the front, animal communication and telepathy, I keep those all open. If you click just back, You'll feel pain body, and if you click just down, electrical and nervous system. Now, these are explained a little bit more in my book, The Art of Inner Alchemy, but at least understand that this is a great activity to practice once you learn how to get in the pineal. What's going to happen is that you can start to activate more of your clairvoyance by learning how to move around. Okay, so I have some comments here. Let's see. Uh, how to tap into the pineal? Is this daily practice used before and headaches and colors? Or she said, I used it before and headache and colors were present. Yes. When you are in the pineal, very often you will start by seeing colors. If you are somebody who has a talent of um, psychic vision, you might start to see flashes of images. Okay. So um, Kathy says, so, so basically, how do you tap into it? We're going to do that next. Is this a daily practice? It is how I live my life. Literally, I was staring off out the window the other day and my boyfriend was like, what are you thinking about God to be in your mind right now? And I'm like, I'm not. Well, what are you doing? I'm looking at the pretty flowers. Are you thinking? No, why would I do that? 
It's just about living and existing. Kathy says, Kelly, are you saying that when we get quiet, listen, open up the pineal, we'll get answers to our questions? Yes, 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 yes. Are we going to hear our guides and angels? Well, not like a loud voice, but you're going to get a gut knowing, or you're going to get a feeling, or you're going to get an understanding, okay? And she says, um, you mean like radio waves are out there in the universe? Kind of, yeah, absolutely. But unless we have a radio and, um, and tune into that wavelength, yes, yes, yes. Um, we won't pick up a radio station, right? Exactly. But the radio station is broadcasting 24 seven. That was Kathy. That was wonderful. Yes, exactly. The pineal is your receiver. Okay. So Sander says, I see images and people lovely. Okay. And, and Cindy says, is that why your dog stares at you? Like you should know what he's thinking. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I, when I meet animals, they're so excited to talk to me because I can talk back to them, okay? Charles says, do those clicks correspond to the holes in the brain? No, not, not mm -mm. no, they don't. The holes are just ways of, of receiving, okay? Okay, and, and uh, so it's about just knowing that you have a, your whole head is a receptor, okay? But they, all those five places meet in the pineal, okay? Um, uh, let's see. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna get in here and keep going because like I said, I've, I've gotta actually go in about eight minutes because I have a client, she's on here. I'm gonna be five minutes late. Okay, <laughs> so remember, here's your eye, there's your nose, play around with clicking around. Okay, somebody asked me recently, will you please create a meditation for this? I had one that I created. I don't know where it is. I'll have to see where, if I still have it or not. And if not, I'll see if I can get one made. Okay, so here we are again, guys. Here's our girl, Maya. Maya's like, uh, okay, I get why I need to be out of the front of my head, but you still haven't told me how. Okay, Maya, we hear you. You're so good at keeping me in check. All right. So um, Kathleen said, or I'm sorry, we've got a couple of things. Um, Kalima says, how does this distinguish between spacing out or mind wandering? Should I stop judging myself when this happens? Yeah, spacing out is actually a good thing, but what that's telling me is you're not grounded. Okay, for us to really receive, we're an electrical being. You gotta be in your body, okay? So, so it can be a little bit different because sometimes um, spacing out can be checking out, which means that you're, you're not listening anywhere. You're not listening here. You're not appreciating nature and you're not of the world. You're kind of either not grounded or you're, you're, you're checking out, okay? So you wanna be present, present, be in the joy, ground your energy into the earth and really feel that. Kathy says, hi, Kelly, um, huge ah, awakening today. Thank you. When can I schedule a session with you? <laughs> this is big. Um, what chatter keeps me stuck at times? Yeah, yeah. So, so I love that. Yes, schedule a, a time. Uh, Kalima, seriously, try grounding and then try being present in joy. Okay, so Maya's impatient here. Maya's like, dude, you still have not told me how. Okay. You have to want to do it. Guys, being out of chatter takes discipline and practice, okay? It doesn't just all of a sudden happen overnight. When I first did this, it took me time, all right? So here, here's the process. Step one, you have to learn to notice when you're in chatter. You have to recognize you're in Mr. Da, 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 or Mr. Da, 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 da. Okay, you have to notice when you're going down the rabbit hole and you have to want to stop it. Okay, so notice your thought. Second step, we've got to take a deep breath into the perineum. The perineum, sorry about this people, is in between anus and vagina or anus and testes. Sorry, but that's where it is. Okay, so you have to Breathe into a nice deep breath into the perineum and then breathe out nice and slow because that is a physiological switch that will stop the release of cortisol and adrenaline that comes from the pituitary gland. Okay, so if you've been in chatter, 
first thing you do is catch it. Oh, I've been in chatter. Okay, stop. Take a deep breath. Okay, that's going to activate your main governing meridian that is going to release or stop the release of cortisol and adrenaline, and it is going to activate your calming energies in your body or your yin energies. Okay, step three, you're going to leave the front to the head. You're going to imagine that your thought is drifting backward, drifting backward drifting backward until you get into a room in the center of your head. You're gonna leave that outside world. You're gonna move your sight inside of you and you're just gonna surrender. You are not going to think. This center of your head, your limbic system, where even the ancient Egyptians knew it was your, your centered place, your, con your connection to your soul. This is where you're going to activate all those pineal receptors and you're going to instantly release all your good, happy chemicals. Okay, that's step three. So, comment. Let's see. Um, respiratory sinus arrhythmia. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so I do want to say um, sinus issues. I've had four sinus operations. I was supposed to have a fit. What did I learn to do? Get out of my head. When I learned to get out of my head and learn to get into my pineal and activate this part of my brain, wow, I didn't have to have my sinuses done anymore. Okay. So Cindy says, use Kelly's pineal meditation. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point it out at the end. It's in my, on my YouTube channel. It's going to teach you how to do this, which you're going to have to do on your own because we won't have time to do today. Okay, here's the next step. Open the top of your head. Okay, open it. So you're going to stop. You're going to catch all of the thought. You're going to close your eyes, take a little, and even if you can't close your eyes, you can do this driving, okay? Take a deep breath into the perineum, all right? Get your thought into the center of the head, dull your thinking. Even if your eyes are open, it doesn't matter. Open the top of the head and allow your perception to be open. Allow all those happy, calming chemicals to be released. They'll be released as quickly as adrenaline will be released when you're scared. You get into the center of your head, you're going to release those other chemicals. And then you're going to go through an experience of training your brain to stop thinking and chattering. Okay? You're going to notice, take time when you get out of your head just to notice the pretty colors of things without thinking about them. Don't say, oh, look at that pretty poppy. No. Just look at it and absorb the color. Feel the feelings inside of you that you get from the color. Feel your surroundings. When you're in your pineal, ask your higher self, your higher being, God, you know, Archangel Michael, whoever, to bring wisdom to you. Feel the wisdom and learn to exist in only this moment. Your boss comes in and he starts screaming at you, pointing a finger with spittle coming out the side of his mouth. What you're going to do is you're going to take a deep breath because your adrenaline is going to start going and you want to stop that. And you're going to shift into the center of your head. Okay. And you're not going to do this. La, la, la. I don't hear you. No, you're going to get into the center of your head and you're going to release your calming energies. And you're going to say something like, I can hear you're upset. I would love to talk to you about that. Okay, he's gonna be like, are you on Valium? And you're gonna be like, no, I'm in my pineal. Okay, so got a couple more comments here. Um, Karen says, the mm, yacarandas are just starting to bloom in Southern California. Gorgeous, is that what this flower is? Whatever it is, it's gorgeous. And <laughs> Amelie says, hi, Amelie. Um, she says they just finished in Mexico. Wonderful. Um, Kathy says, um, Kelly, in the, in the hours, Eve pick wasn't the math figures Fibonacci code. Yes, um, Kathy is asking in that uh, the um, Eye of Horus um, picture was the were the was the 
was that the Fibonacci um, relationship? Yes, it is. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. Okay, let's get through here because I'm one minute late for my client right now, but again, she's on here. I think she actually texts. Hold on. Nope, that wasn't her. Okay, here's the other thing. Give yourself reminders. I actually put little um, breathe stickers. I, I got those little labels from that you can put on like a label maker and I printed out breathe <laughs> or get in your pineal. And I put it around my house, like on my, like across from where I went to the restroom, where I did my dishes, um, on my coffee maker, you know, things like that on my computer so that I would stop and just get into the pineal. Okay, you know, it'll take you 30 seconds or less. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, shift your attention into the pineal, open up the, the top of the head and allow beautiful energy in. That's it, that's it. And you just keep telling your front of the brain, you're not in charge anymore. I choose to live from the limbic system, okay? So give yourself reminders. I do want to say this is a little excessive. Don't do this. This is just cray cray. Remember everything in moderation. But I do also want to say this. When you catch yourself in chatter, celebrate. Don't get upset. Don't do a, don't do a, a Homer Simpson. Don't do that. Don't do a Homer Simpson. You're going to go, score. I caught you, ego. I caught you. Okay, and if you need to catch it 20 times a day, fine. There's no guilt in soul work, okay? So when you're training your brain, just keep trying, okay? Move into existing, not thinking. You're just gonna exist, and you're gonna celebrate every time you catch it, all right? So this is my YouTube channel. There is a, a meditation I made just for this, for my clients. Pineal Activation, Guided Meditation with Kelly Schwegel. Yay! And Doc Pierce. He's the one who did the, the tuning forks in the background. Beautiful work, okay? It's nine minutes and 42 seconds. You can do this. Start your day in a good way. Uh, the people who use this meditation and get in there, I had this woman, she was so dedicated. We, I gave her a tarot reading, a calendar reading, and it was not a very pleasant one. And she's like, how do I change this? I'm like, you got to get out of your head. I'm dedicated. She did it. Do, new job, new, <laughs> new relationship, new house, money coming in. I mean, it was just like incredible. Okay. You want to change your life? Change your thought. All right. So I'm going to come back to us. Stop the share. We got some questions here. Okay. So, um, Oh, and John says, it's a great meditation. Thank you. Rachel, I am coming. I promise. Okay. <laughs> Cindy says, this is how I learned to meditate. Um, use this repeatedly. I couldn't do it before. And Kathleen said she loves that meditation. And so somebody said to me very privately, she said, this gives me hope. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Again, you want to change your life, change where you think from. Every time you catch yourself in chatter, realize it is not true. It is lying to you. The front of the head lies. Get into the limbic system. Open up your heart brain and open up your gut brain. Okay? If you open those brains and start to feel and know you're gonna find accuracy. The reason kinesiology works is because the body doesn't lie, okay? The body knows, the head lies, right? Anytime you're wanting to answer a question for yourself, get in the pineal, open up and say, am I gonna be okay? And you're gonna get a good answer. Should I be here? No. Am I gonna be okay? Yes. Okay, learn to listen. Now, on my, um, on my Facebook page, no, sorry, scratch that. On my website, kellyschwegel.com, if you go into the classes, um, Inner Wisdom classes, you're gonna find Psychic Fun. 
So there are three classes that like for the first half hour, I did a, a psychic fun class. And then for the next half hour, I did um, a live Q and A. So you don't have to listen to the Q and A, but like for the first 20, 30 minutes, you're going to learn a little bit more about your clairvoyance, but you're not going to be clairvoyant if you're in your chat up. Okay. So get out of the chat up. Okay, so a couple more comments. Um, Jim says, thank you as always. You're welcome. And Kathy says, such a great class. Um, thank you. Yes, the pineal meditation is great. I listened to it. Yay. Cindy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Narissa, hi, Narissa says, love this. Thank you. You are welcome. Adelina, hi, sweetie. She says, thank you for helping me um, refocus today. You're welcome. Sandra gives some prayers. Kathy says, thank you. Oh, wonderful. Judy, oh, hi, honey. She said, it's so encouraging, isn't it? Okay. And uh, Kalima, I hope I'm saying that right, says thank you. And Amelie, um, you are awesome. And D. Louise, thank you. We love you. Love you back. Okay, everyone, enjoy the meditation. Enjoy getting out of your head. Take the time. And Rachel, I'm coming. <laughs> Bye, John. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Bye now. Okay, ciao.